Welcome everyone to our Q4 investment update. Uh, my name's Tom Merchant. I'm one of the business development managers um, for Saltus, obviously, and I'm pleased to be joined again by Mike Stimson, a partner of our investment team. Hi, Mike. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, so just to kick us off, really, um, it's fair to say Q4 uh, specifically was quite an, um, a high impact month. So maybe just to kick us off, it'd be great if you could just give us sort of a high level update um, just on what basically went on. Sure. So uh, I, I think we've got to think about the fourth quarter as a, a sort of game of two halves. You know, the, the, the first half we were dealing with hawkish central banks and inflation data that was, that was pretty unclear. Well, it, we didn't have clear direction. And then the second half, so from sort of early November, we had unambiguously good US CPI numbers. You know, the October number was, 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 was clearly down. And that meant markets accepted that we were now past peak inflation and therefore would be past peak interest rates too. Um, and then in December, the Federal Reserve came out um, unexpectedly dovish for, for, for the first time and, and sort of added fuel to that recovery fire. Um, and markets continued to sort of power forward into, in, in, into the new year. Um, so, so overall, we sort of in the second half of of the quarter, we had a very powerful two month rally, which recovered previous losses and, and sort of pushed us slightly higher for the year. Brilliant. Now, I appreciate we have a very educated client base, but um, could we potentially um, just cover off quickly what the difference between hawkish and dovish is uh, for those, uh, just making sure that we're not talking to a few keen bird watchers? Sure, sure. Um, so hawkish is when, um, if the central bank is hawkish, it means that it's, um, it's sort of conservative, it's more worried about inflation than growth. And so a hawkish central bank would be looking to raise interest rates, whereas a dovish central bank is saying, actually, the next move's li likely to be down. And so that was a real shift in um, US central bank sentiment, where in December, where previously all the rhetoric had previously been, we're not sure inflation's finished, we, inflation's still the number one concern, interest rates could definitely go higher. In December, they were saying, yeah, for now, it looks like it looks like we're done, and you know markets can can sort of relax, and they, and they very much took on that message. Brilliant. Um, and I suppose what most people on this call typically want to know is what has that meant for us and for our portfolio. So, would you maybe make a sort of touch on what this sort of dovishness and a rebound in the markets have meant for us? Sure. So, I mean, big picture. It, it means that things have turned for the better. Um, and, you know, we through, through the fourth quarter have been um, increasing risk in, in portfolios. Um, and we've, we've particularly put money to work in, um, in credit, in investment grade credit. These are investments like um, bonds from companies like, you know, Microsoft or Coca-Cola, you know, big, well-known companies. And these kinds of investments tend to do well at the peak of an interest rate cycle because you get the coupon. Um, so you get your interest payments, but also the potential for some capital appreciation as investors come out of cash and start to seek higher returns. And so we, we look at these investments where you can expect a total return of, you know, perhaps just under 10% over, over 18 months with, you know, reasonably limited downside, which feels like a, a pretty attractive investment to, to, to make right now. And we, we haven't gone sort of full. Uh, pedal to the metal, as it were. You know, we don't want to be um, too risk on because the reality is we've only had two months of good of good data, and there's still a res recession risk out there. Um, so today we we sort of sit about ten percent below our risk budgets in portfolios, having been as much as fifteen or twenty percent um, below them through most of 2023. Okay, so keeping a little bit of powder dry, um, just looking for some possible opportunities heading forward. That, that's right. And I think, uh, you know, we've, we've seen markets come off a touch in January and, you know, as things are falling, we very much see that as opportunities to buy today rather than a threat. So we're looking to put more money to work when appropriate. Perfect. And I suppose that sort of brings us up nicely to, so what is the outlook? What are we look at forward looking? What are we seeing? What are we thinking? Um, obviously you mentioned there's been a little bit of a sell-off in January, yeah. but are we using this as a buying opportunity? Yeah, that that's right. I mean, Broadly, we're, we're, we feel more positive than we, than we have done. Um, again, because we believe and, and markets believe that, that we're through the peak of inflation. Um, however, we're, we're sort of not out of the woods yet. You know, there, there, there's quite a lot still to get through. 
We've got harder relative comparisons to come. So both you know, profit numbers from companies and inflation numbers, you know, we'll shortly be comparing falling inflation with falling inflation. Um, there's lots of geopolitical news to come this year. Um, seven of the 10 most populated countries in the world are voting these this year. You know, the, those populations aren't in the mood to hear about austerity or, or, or spending cuts, but governments have, you know, a very real debt issue. Um, so there's a, there's a friction there, which leads to, you know, dare, dare I say it, the potential for another Liz Trust type moment. Um, so, so, so there's definitely um, stuff to get through. You know, the most important thing is going to be the US election, as, as, as we'd expect, the possibility of Donald Trump returning um, again. As we sort of get get towards the summer, there's going to be a huge amount of noise about this. Um, at the moment, uh, the the protectionist policies um, and the protectionist rhetoric that's coming out that that's not terribly um, positive for global growth. Although historically, markets have always thought Republican presidents would be good for growth, so we're going to have to watch that quite 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 carefully. Um, you know, there's also the potential for sticky inflation numbers to to still be a bit unsettling. You know, while we do think we're past peak inflation, getting all the way down to 2%, you know, we've, we, we've still got a little bit of work to do. But, but there are always things to be nervous about. There are always reasons to be, to be cautious. Um, and overall, we very much feel, you know, it's, it's glass half full and looking for opportunities to put money to work in risk assets. Perfect. Um, so, I mean, to summarize, it sounds that we are optimistic, but typically cautiously so. Um, and I suppose... Is there any other sort of closing comments you think worth adding? I appreciate last year was a bumpy year, but it was nice to finish very strong for some clients and portfolios. But um, is there anything you'd like to add to finish off? Yeah, I think ca cautiously optimistic is, is probably a good way to to to, to sum it up. Um, I think we you know we feel positive that that that, that we can produce you know better positive returns this year than than last. Um, albeit we had that very strong end of the year. Um, and, and, but we're going to have to stay nimble. We're going to continue to to react but 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 broadly we're feeling glass half full brilliant perfect um well any other closing thoughts or otherwise we'll um catch everyone up uh, uh, for a q1 the end of q1 update in a few months so if any questions or obviously any if you'd like to sort of discuss any of this further please do reach out to your advisor or obviously contact myself and obviously we're delighted to speak further thanks bye, -bye. thanks so much mm -hmm.